Legendary Green Bay Packers head coach Vince Lombardi once stated, the greatest accomplishment is not in never falling, but in rising again after you fall. How will you react when your back is against the wall? What is your will to win? If there's something out there you want, you're going to go get it. If there's something on that field you want, you better go get it. Let's get it, squad! Let's get it, squad! Don't leave nothing on this field. Into that energy tank, man. That energy tank's got to be in Let's eat! Let's eat, you go! Back to the 20. He's back to the 30. He may have it. He's at midfield. He just went 100 yards. Tannehill downfield. He's got Swift wide open. Is this the backbreaker? Gray's turning the corner at the 20, at the 15, cuts back on his back, spin move. He is a touchdown! How about those apples? Give him what they came here for! Give him what they came here for! Big game coming up, baby, let's keep working! Let's get it, baby, it's game time, baby. What is our only option today? Win! 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 into the 2010 season, the Texas A&M football program received a lot of national attention. The Aggies' highly touted offense was back in full force, and senior All-American Von Miller returned to lead the defense back to wrecking crew status. Expectations were high in Aggieland, and it was time to show it on the field. What kind of effort do we have? Fanatical. Well, fanatical. What type of effort do we have? Fanatical. Every play. Every play. One, two, three, four. Let's go. Hole up the middle. Hand off. Breaks a tackle. Touchdown. That's Christian Michael. It's been picked. And here we go the other way. And that is a touchdown. And he's going to run with it. Fake job. Right. All right. back. And then he steps in for a touchdown. That's Gerard. And now the shovel pass goes to Kristen Michael. Broke a tackle, scooting out here to the right side. Got a uh, block. 20, 10, 5. Pumps once, under pressure. Got a sack, and it's Demontre Moore. Play action, lofting one, going in zone. Touchdown, that's Texas A&M. And that's Jeff Fuller. We had the largest home open crowd they've ever had here. Uh, we have the best student body uh, of anybody in America. There's no question about that, and they're going to be with us. Uh, the entire season. In the shotgun. Time to throw. Lofton one. Got Tannehill. Catch! Touchdown! Throwing deep. Got a man. And that is caught. That's a... He got a touchdown! Watch a coup! Wants to throw here. Oh, some pressure. Ball's coughed up. And the Aggies are going to get that one. Quarterback. Fumble. Fumble the ball. And did a and get the yes. Punts away. Takes it at the 46, goes to the 40, to the 35, missed tackle, 30, at the 25, got a block, he's at the 5, he is a touchdown! And they hand off, and the Aggies swarm him. That's Garrick Williams, went on the ground, smothered that time by... Kyle Mangum, empty in the backfield, steps up, throws, and almost it was picked up. That's Lionel Smith on the ground. There's a nice hole, break a tackle. He's going to score. Michael going to throw deep, going into the end zone. That's McCoy down there. McCoy caught it. The snap drops back under pressure. He's going to be sacked. Von Miller, Von got him at the 20. Seven yard line. Man, a little misdirection. Good hole. Cuts back. He's got a chance. He's got to score. It's a touchdown. Cyrus Gray. Fourth down play and goal at the Aggie seven. Been snapped. He is throwing. He is a completion at the three. And that will give the Aggies the ball. 
All day. All day, baby. We got to thank the crowd. The crowd was phenomenal. When you guys were out there, our crowd, our fans were unbelievable. And they, kept, they kept us going. They wouldn't let us sit down. They kept on us. And that's what it means to be an Aggie. That's what it means to play at this stadium. My front five guys, man, those guys did tremendous tonight, man. Those guys told us, me and Cyrus on the sideline, also Gerard, man, we're we going to give it to y'all. You, you, you trust us, and, and we're going to trust y'all to run the ball, man. That's what, that's what happened. Us being able to overcome that adversity uh, is definitely a milestone, and we, we know we can do it now. You know, we're a team, and we're going to pick each other up when we need to. The way our fans hung in there with us throughout the entire ball game, and I guarantee you this victory, if we give them all a game ball, I would. At the end of the ball game, the noise on the field certainly was exciting. Through the first three games, Texas A&M was undefeated, but the level of competition was about to change. It was time for Big 12 Conference play. And up first, a road trip to Oklahoma State. ESPN was there for this prime time Thursday night showdown, and the Aggies were ready for the spotlight. Today's the night to be a man. What does that mean? If there's something out there you want, you gotta go get it. If there's something on that field you want, you better go get it. Whedon, he coming behind. Ball's loose. They threw the beanbag. It's a fumble. Looks like AM's got it. Von Miller with that catch. Jeff Fuller now has his 20th career touchdown reception. He stands alone atop the Aggie record book. Sweden stands in, fires into traffic. It is intercepted. Dustin Harris, his second pick of the year. Shovel pass. Touchdown, Cyrus Gray. Johnson fires. Touchdown. Jeff Fuller for the second time tonight. Texas A&M held a 14-point advantage at halftime thanks to a record-setting offensive display. Senior quarterback Gerard Johnson tossed three first-half TDs, becoming A&M's first-ever 7,000-yard career passer in the process. Jeff Fuller was on the receiving end of two of those scores, earning him A&M's all-time record for career touchdown receptions with 21. But Oklahoma State did not go away. Crucial turnovers set the Cowboys up for some easy scores, and the Aggies found themselves down 14 points with just over 12 minutes remaining in the game. But AM did not panic. Instead, they went back to work. Steps back, he throws, and that's a catch, and that's Kenry McNeil. Empty in the backfield. Outside pressure, a throw, a catch at the 20, at the 10, at the 5, at Swope, and he dives in. Touchdown! Ryan Swope's dive across the goal line tied the game at 35, and the Aggies were poised to pull off a remarkable comeback on the road. But OSU made a last-minute interception and kicked a 40-yard field goal as time expired to escape with a 38-35 victory. After a hard-fought battle, the Aggies were heartbroken. Came here expecting to win. You know, losing at the end was rough, but, uh, I mean, it's a learning experience, and uh, we're, we're just going to go back next week and continue to get better. Unfortunately, this one got away from us, but really, it wasn't because of the talent we had. Our talent is, you know, is as good as it needs to be to be the best in the nation. We just got to put all the pieces together. Up next, the annual Southwest Classic against the 11th-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks. Each year, these two traditional powers meet up in Dallas for a clash at the NFL's crown jewel, Cowboys Stadium. Once again, a national television audience tuned in for another classic college football matchup. That number and name on the back of your jersey, that identifies who you are, right? Yes, sir. That name on the front, Tex a and that identifies what you are. What are we? We're Aggies, right? Yes, sir. We represent this football team, this football fan. We represent the 12th man, the core, the fan, the university. We represent Aggies everywhere. They're going to say it out of bounds at the two-yard line. Touchdown, Kristen Michael. Now they're going to go.
go deep. That one-on-one coverage and is caught at the 20, 71 yards. Arkansas showing blitz, picked up nicely, ball to Fuller, got out of the race. 30, tackle just inside the 25. First down, pass for the end zone, wide open, touchdown Ben Cleveland. Johnson steps up, throws far sideline. Touchdown, Jeff Fuller. Third down, pressure again, and he's going to be set. And it's Vaughn Miller. A play action, that's what they're trying to do, and the pressure is going to get to him. And that is DeMontre Moore. DeMontre Moore has been very impressive. Once again, it came down to the final drive. This time, the Aggies had the ball and were driving for the game-tying score. Johnson wants to snap. Going to go Hail Mary to the right side of the end zone. The ball is tipped up and intercepted by Arkansas Tremaine Thomas. And the clock is run out. As time expired, Gerard Johnson launched a Hail Mary to the end zone, but the Razorbacks weren't fooled. For the second straight game, the Aggies fell just short. We don't look at this as a moral victory or anything like that. I mean, we come out here and, you know, expect to beat everybody. You know, we prepared and we come up here with a mindset to win a football game. We didn't do it, uh, regardless of people saying, well, you know, he played a good game. If they did say that, uh, you know, we can't accept that because we didn't come away with a victory. Sherman is battle tested. The former Green Bay Packers head coach has been in big games his entire career, including conference championships and Super Bowls. Through it all, he has demanded one trait from every player that walks into his locker room, character. For three seasons, Coach Sherman has been building that character in Aggieland. After three wins to begin the 2010 campaign, this team suffered three consecutive losses. Times were hard, but everyone in that Texas A&M locker room still believed. They simply had too much character to let the 12th man down. Well, we got inside a bus, it's special. We got to let them loose in about 10 minutes. Let's go, win on three. One, two, three, win. Win. Got Gray behind him. Gray got the ball. He's on the right side, scampering out. Just scored a touchdown. He got it in from nine. Johnson's elected to keep it. He's going to walk in for a touchdown. Take the snap at the Aggie 45. Going to throw and bat it down. Big hand. Oh, intercepted. Texas A&M. And play action. Going to throw. Got a man. That's Fuller. He's wide open. That's a touchdown. Going to throw. Lofted in one. And it is intercepted. Texas A&M. And Tannehill will move under center. Play action. Tannehill's going deep. He's got a guy, and that is Fuller. And he walks in, just dances into the end zone. Going to throw. It's a catch. It's a 10. They have a chance to score. Diving in, and Megan it is 12. Play action. Rolling. Pick. Going to be sacked. They just rode him right into the turf. And that's Hodges. And shotgun. And Tannehill's going to keep. He bites his way in. That's a touchdown. That's Ryan Tannehill. The Aggies were able to get back on the winning track with a dominant performance over the Kansas Jayhawks. The high-powered offense recorded another 500 total yard gain in a 45-10 route. Coming off three tough losses, uh, we, it was really pivotal for our team to come out here and get a win. Um, we came out uh, with the determination to win and uh, you know, the mindset the whole week was, you know, we got to get a win, we have to get a win. So um, we were able to do that and, and, and uh, come out with victory tonight. You know, we came in with, with a chip on our shoulder and, and we knew what we had to do. We knew we had to win this game going into a big game coming up uh, at home next week. So, you know, it, it was just a team. It was a team effort. Hey, big game coming up, baby. Let's keep working. Work on three. Work on three. One, two, three. Work. Texas A&M returned to Aggieland with five games remaining on the nation's most difficult schedule. That's no surprise considering the Big 12 is widely considered one of the best conferences in all of college football. But the Aggies remained confident as South Division rival Texas Tech rolled into College Station. The 2010 version of this classic matchup did not start like the Aggies were hoping. The Red Raiders jumped out to a 7-0 lead and were driving again when the Aggie defense made a play. 
Got two wides on the open side. The halfback got it. He's going to get in for a... He fumbled the ball. Wait a minute. He got to the goal line. Looked like he may have fumbled the Aggies. Uh, yep. That's Aggies good. recovered it in the end zone. That's a touchback. Trent Hunter's forced fumble on the goal line changed momentum. And from that point on, it was all Texas A&M. Snap, throw it, screen to the other side. It's Detron Lewis. Good open field tackle, Texas A&M. Dustin Harris drops back, throwing it. And we're going to the sideline. And that's going to be Fuller. And he's inside the 20s at the 19-yard line. Lamont was going to throw it to Lamont. He's got it. He's fighting for a touchdown. He got it. It was Lamont as a fullback out of the backfield. He lobbed it right to him. And that's for Lamont. Is his second catch of the year. He's two catches now for 14 yards. Second quarter. AM leads 10 to 7. Knocking on the door. Loft is going to play jump ball. And it is Fuller. And a flag's going to go down. They have signaled touchdown. Tannehill throws a hard pass. Touchdown, Fuller. Oh, he streamlined that one. That was, that was a bullet to Fuller. He just caught the touchdown pass. Nine seconds left. Made it 23-14. Extra point to come. The Aggies held a 24-14 advantage at halftime, but blew the game wide open in the third quarter. Left corner, 50. Can he go? He may. He's at the 25-20. He's at the 10-5. He just went touchdown. 54 yards. Drops back. He's under pressure. He's sacked inside the 10. And that was Miller and Williams. They made a quarterback sandwich. On the ground, we have a chance to get in. Touchdown. The handoff goes to Gray. Aggies. Minute 36 to go, third quarter, just made it 37-14, the PAT to come. A&M put another touchdown on the board in the fourth to finish off a dominant win over Tech, 45-27. to Man, that feels great to, to beat, you know, uh, Texas Tech. They had a great football team out there, and uh, we just came out, we executed, and, uh, you know, we uh, we got the W. Well, we're playing really well. I mean, we still have mistakes, I mean, day in, day out, but nothing we can't clean up. I mean, we're just going out there and playing. Playing hard, everybody on the same page, good things happen. AM's dynamic offense was clicking on all cylinders, heading into the next showdown in the Big 12. But it was the defense that was ready to make a statement. And what better way to do it than on national TV against the ninth-ranked Oklahoma Sooners? Prime time under the lights at Rocking Kyle Field. This was going to be special. Murray set off to his right side. And a snap through the end zone. A safety for Texas A&M. We'll see Tannehill take it. And Ryan gets the first down. He's past midfield. Tannehill with terrific speed. A former wide receiver to the 21. Tannehill to throw. Swings it left for the touchdown. Hudson Prelo. Double tight end. DeMarco. No, he did not get in. It was Vaughn Miller, the All-American. Here's a throw downfield. Intercepted by Coriel Judy. Knowing it would take a strong effort to take down the Sooners, A&M's D coordinator, Tim DeRuiter, dialed up an aggressive game plan, and it proved to be very disruptive to the OU offensive attack. Von Miller and company were relentless on the pass rush, forcing uncharacteristic mistakes from the Sooners. The result was a first-half shutout, sending OU to the locker room trailing 12-0. Of course, there was still plenty of football to be played, but it didn't take long for AM to extend its lead. Back to the 10, back to the 20, he's back to the 30. He may have it. He's at midfield. He's running hard. He's at the 30, 20, 15, 10. He just went 100 yards. Took it right at the goal line, started up the middle, broke to his right, found a big hole. He had one guy to beat. He did it. And then he outran everybody to the end zone. 19-0 Texas A&M. The Ags were rolling thanks to Coriel Judy's 100-yard kickoff return to begin the second half. But the Sooners continued to battle, inching back into the game throughout the rest of the third quarter. That's when A&M Cyrus Gray took over. Here's the running back. Gray first down to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Cyrus Gray! 
Up 26-17 with 11 minutes to go. It was up to the defense to hold on. And Jones hands off the fullback. He didn't I don't get there. Think he got there. He didn't get in. Stopped him at the goal line. That was Miller. Murray's got it. They're trying to get him out to the far sideline. He did not get in. This one is over with. They just dropped him at about the four-yard line. Von Miller was one of the ones that got him, along with Dustin Harris. Hey, for the third time in this ball game, Oklahoma has been shut out of the end zone from inside the five. What a defensive effort by this Aggie team. Oh, goodness hey. gracious. A minute 14, and then we can all have a great time. The goal line stand sealed the game in grand fashion. Wrecking crew chance rained down from the 12th man as Texas A&M celebrated its third consecutive win, 33 to 19 over the number nine team in the country. Our night, no one else's, right? Yeah. Our night. Yes, sir. When we win, we win as a team, we lose as we lose as a team. Tonight we won as a yes, team. Great job, man. You know, I, I came back for this and you know it just feels so good to, to do it and have Cyrus and Tony and Gig right there and the rest of my teammates and you know it just it just felt amazing. I don't think I've ever been a part of a win like this. We back, baby. We back. We back. We're not playing at wrecking crew level yet, but we're approaching it. And I think our kids are looking at it as a goal. And uh, we play inspired like we did tonight because the crowd got behind us. Uh, it's nice to hear them respond with Wrecking Crew. You know, having the 12th man uh, had our back the whole game. You know, our defense, uh, I think they leaned on the 12th man, you know. Uh, a lot of, lot of third and shorts, fourth and shorts, the, the crowd really got loud and really energized us. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's great to, to have those guys on your side, and uh, we love time for the Aggies to hit the road north on Highway 6 to Waco. There the Baylor Bears awaited with hopes of knocking off the Aggies who are now ranked number 23 in the polls. This old school Southwest Conference rivalry dates back over 100 years and is filled with emotion on both sides. In the first half, Baylor fed off that emotion, building a 30 to 14 advantage. But the Aggies remained calm, putting together one final scoring drive of the half. The ball to Tannehill. Plenty of time. Throwing wide open. Swope, and he just scored a touchdown. He dives in from the one. The late score brought the Aggies within nine at the half, but they were not satisfied. AM knew they were the better, more physical team, and they had 30 minutes to prove it. Here's a throw. That's a catch, and that's quote. That's a first down, Texas AM. Tannehill's got time. He is throwing. And he is going to catch it, and that's going to be Fuller. He leaped high in the air, brought it down with the left hand. First down, 10. And it goes to Gray. Gray breaks out, and he is fighting. He's in end zone, and that's a touchdown. He just got it in from 13 yards. The snap, and he got away from one guy. He's gonna, is that a fumble? Is that a fumble? And it's still on the ground, and they are still fighting for it. I think Baylor ended up with the ball back at the two. And Griffin is slow in getting up. Give it to Gray again. Dances. Got a stiff arm. He's at the five. He's going to get a touchdown from 10 out. Your eggs out with the lead. The Aggies used smash mouth football to take over in the second half. The wrecking crew shut down Baylor, holding them scoreless with just 136 total yards. Cyrus Gray was the story for the AM offense, scoring four touchdowns while recording his fourth straight 100 yard game. Gray's final rushing TD capped off a 28 0 run and an unbelievable 42 30 final score in favor of the Aggies. Let's go, baby, let's go! We 
came in here, wasn't pretty, first half was pretty ugly. We got together, we talked about it. There's no panic, was there? No, no sir. Composure, no, sir. we go out there, we get done, we need to get done. That's maturity. Yes, That's where we're going right now. Maturity. We in this thing. You know what I'm talking about? We in this thing, baby. Let's go. You know, first half was kind of bad for us, as everybody seen. But you know, it was something that we knew within ourselves that we had to fix. And you know, second half, we came out and shut them out. Yeah, you know, once, once we were going, we were going. You know, the O-line played a great game the whole game. Cyrus ran hard the whole game. Receivers blocked well downfield. Uh, and then pass protection, the O-line gave me time, and I was able to find some open receivers. We came back second half prepared and knowing exactly what they was going to do, and we just executed. And it's because it's everybody on the uh, team gave an alpha effort on the defense. They played so awesome. Uh, Taylor Russell with a big sack, and uh, just they, they came together as one, just like they've been doing. And, uh, I'm so I'm so proud of them. Unity on three. Unity on three. One, two, three. Unity. Unity. <laughs> College football is known for its tradition, pageantry loyalty and passion every fall saturday stadiums across the country are filled with fathers sons families friends that would give anything to see their team win the big game but at texas a&m it's different it's bigger a game day in aggieland is unlike any other in the world and on november 20th 2010 the entire country was able to see why texas a&m is so special sold-out Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. This could be a record-breaking crowd tonight. They're expected to soar past 90,000. When you talk about the great scenes in college football, one that belongs right near the top is right here at Aggieland. Tonight, Texas A&M against Nebraska. Oh, it was electric. All that is right and good about college football was on full display at Aggieland that night, including the largest student crowd to ever witness a college football game. As the anticipation built in the stands, Texas A&M took a moment to honor the Aggie seniors prior to kickoff. This truly special group of young men with a driving force behind A&M's resurgence into the national spotlight. Led by two-time All-American Vaughn Miller and quarterback Gerard Johnson, this class shattered the A&M record books. The steady leadership of Miller, Michael Hodges, and Lucas Patterson revived the wrecking crew defense, while fellow seniors Matt Allen and Terrence McCoy helped to build the Aggie offense into one of the most explosive in the country. This senior class certainly left its mark at Texas A&M, and it was time for their grand finale at Kyle Field. Shotgun again for Green at the 50, takes the snap, gonna throw it out here in the flats, and A&M, oh, they smell that out, and the tackle by Terrence Frederick, and when he grabs hold of you, he won't let go. Snaps, and that one, he fumbled the ball in the Aggies, who got the ball? I think Nebraska got it back. And play action, Tannehill running, Tannehill throwing, and a catch on the sideline, is that a completion? They are going to say, yep, it was caught. Daniel's going to go under center first and 10, or second and one, rather. And they're going to throw it to Gray out of the backfield. Turns the corner 30, 25. Out he goes at the 22. The spot will be at the 19-yard line, so a 29-yard field goal. Here's the staff to hold the kick, and it's good. Entering the contest, both teams touted highly ranked defenses. They were showing why. The score was deadlocked at three apiece at halftime. Trent Hunter made the play of the half for A&M. It was this interception that halted a Husker drive. With both teams playing tough D, it was clear this one was going down to the wire. Play action. Martinez going to throw it down in front. And it's picked off. Intercepted by Hunter. Trent Hunter makes the pick. And now Tannehill, a big in trouble. Fires, wants Fuller for the first time, and he's got it. He's got his big man. Jeff Fuller shows you why he's one of the best. 
so it's going to be a 28-yard effort, Tom. All right, one for one. Here's the snap, the hold, and the kick, and he got it. It's two field goals to one here, guys. They're going to kick a field goal, Tom. It'll be spotted at the 19-yard line. It's a 29-yard effort. They go back to the left. Yeah, and it's a chip shot for Henry, and he just put it straight through. Midway through the fourth quarter, the score remained tied at six. All 90,000 fans rose to their feet as the Aggies took over on their own 30-yard line. Could Texas A&M make one final drive? Quick snap. Danson throwing at Swope. That's a first down. They throw him to the ground at the 48-yard line. Gray cuts back left, cuts back right. He's still going. He's across the 30. He's down to the 28-yard line. With a second down and about four. Give it to Gray one more time. He is at the 20. He is inside the 10, right at the 10. He's down there. That's Gray. And here we go with Bullock. 19-yard effort. Here's the kick, and it's straight through. There you go. No problems. Randy Bullock's third field goal of the night put A&M up 9-6. But three minutes remained on the clock. The wrecking crew would have to make one more stop. Stab it in a hurry. Has outside pressure. He is tackled. He's going to be tied. A sack back at the 30. That's a sack for Texas A&M. Rolling out to his right, he's going to throw a long ball, and that's going to be out of bounds, and it is an incomplete pass. And that on downs will get Texas A&M the football. Two snaps ought to do it, and the Aggies will win this game 9-6. to six. Dave, it is a huge win for the Aggies and for the 12th man. It's snowing 12th man towels here. What's up? Incredible. Uh, we've got the best uh, best fans in college football, no doubt about it. Our 12th man supports us 100%. No one was sitting down, the towels were waving. Um, you know, it was just an incredible feeling. It was so loud, they couldn't make the calls up front. They had to they had to stick with what they had, which which once they saw what we were in and defensively, they weren't able to make adjustments, which hurt them. Kirby, I think this is one of the loudest venues in college football. I'm with you. It's, and when AM is winning, I don't think there's a better venue. These fans stand up the entire game. What a way to close out the home schedule at Kyle Field. The Aggies, now 8-3 and three overall, were right in the middle of a heated conference race with just one more game to go. Texas A&M and Texas, the Lone Star Showdown live from Austin on Thanksgiving night. This historic matchup is the best rivalry in college football. Millions tune in every year for this clash of the Titans in the state of Texas. So much is on the line for these two schools. Bragging rights, pride, and championships. It's all defined in this one game in front of a national audience. With emotions running high, the Aggies and Longhorns found themselves in a close physical contest. That is, until A&M Cyrus Gray busted loose. Cyrus Gray, Gray into the open field. Cyrus Gray on his way. Gideon giving chase, so is Williams. They won't get him. Touchdown A&M. 84 yards. Gray, right up the middle. Gray's on his way. There's your answer. Touchdown, Aggies. 48 yards. Cyrus Gray is having a night. 179 yards. Two long touchdown runs. Behind A&M's overpowering offensive line, Gray reeled off 223 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. It was just another day at the office for number 32, who finished the 2010 campaign with seven straight 100-yard games and over 1,100 rush yards. The Aggies were up 24-14 heading into the fourth quarter, 
The Longhorns had hopes of a comeback, but the wrecking crew had other plans. Gilbert on third down, firing and intercepted. What a tremendous play by Justin Harris. Gilbert firing, ball tip, and intercepted by Von Miller. Spencer Neely got a hand on it, and Von Miller, the senior, makes a great interception off the block pass. Von Miller's interception sealed the game for A&M and put an exclamation point on his remarkable career for the Maroon and White. Against the Longhorns, Miller recorded seven tackles, two sacks, three tackles for loss, forced a fumble and recovered one and had the game-clinching interception. Let the celebration begin. Texas A&M 24, Texas 17. We had a good streak going and we're a good team and we've known it the whole season that we're a good team and just we're just a family out here and we love each other and this is exactly what I what I came back for is to be back with my brothers and to get this feeling. This team right here is, is probably the best team I've ever been a part of. And, you know, every in everybody's lives they always have, you know, some phenomenal happen. And I and I just think this is this is my year, my phenomenal year with my teammates and my brothers and I could be more proud of everybody on my team, all my teammates, all my brothers on here. And uh, I'm just overwhelmed with feelings right now. It feels so good to get a win, bring the wrecking crew back. You know, it's just crazy. Nine wins, six in a row. Uh, a lot of people would have, a lot of teams would have folded after th three and three. You guys just kept the course, kept, kept fighting, kept plugging. And I, 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 like I said, I could be more proud of you guys. You've done a great job hanging together. Let's call them up. Here we go. Pay me on three. One, two, three. Bam! Bam! The victory over Texas was A&M's ninth on the season, earning them a share of the 2010 Big 12 South Division Championship. The Aggies narrowly missed out on a trip to the conference title game. Oklahoma and Nebraska earned that trip to Dallas for the conference championship, both of which lost to the Aggies. As the bowl games were announced, 17th ranked Aggies were selected to play in the 75th Cotton Bowl Classic against LSU. This top-notch bowl game created a lot of buzz throughout Aggieland and the country. Cowboys Stadium was filled to the brim on the night of January 7th as these two old rivals took the field in prime time. And early on, the Aggies were rolling. To the 10 to the 15, little hole there, 20, skips outside, 30. He's at the 40, he's at the 50. He is out of bounds inside the 35 at about the LSU 31-yard line. That guy is magic. Under center with the eye back again. Tannehill throws, that's the catch, that's McNeil. He's knocked out of bounds at the 10-yard line. He just got nine. Watch a coup on the short side, in tight, on the right. Here's a throw, and that is a catch, and that's a touchdown. It's Texas A&M. They're going to be watch a coup, watch a coup, caught it, fell across the goal line, and the Aggies are up six to nothing. Brian Tannehill's touchdown pass to Easy Watch a coup put the Aggies on top seven nothing. Easy was on the receiving end of another touchdown pass in the second quarter. This time, Cyrus Gray was on the other end of the throw. The score put A&M up. 17-14 with seven minutes remaining in the half. Unfortunately, LSU was able to respond with a score and a late turnover led to another TD before the break. The Aggies continued to fight back in the second half but couldn't get over the hump as LSU pulled away late in the ball game. The loss certainly wasn't how A&M had hoped to finish out the season, but make no mistake about it, Texas A&M football is back. The Aggies finished 2010 with a top 20 ranking and a long list of national awards. Von Miller was recognized as college football's best linebacker and was presented with the Dick Butkus Award. The legendary Chicago Bears linebacker made a trip to College Station to personally hand the hardware to Miller in front of all of his teammates at the Bright Complex. Miller was dubbed a first-team All-American and first-team All-Big 12. He was joined on the all-conference squad by fellow teammates Jeff Fuller, Cyrus Gray, 
Lucas Patterson, Michael Hodges, Matt Allen, and Coriel Judy. And two young stars in the making were named to the freshman All-American team as well. Luke Jokel and DeMontre Moore earned this title following impressive rookie seasons in the maroon and white. Coach Sherman and his talented staff will push forward with higher expectations in 2011. The Aggies are picked in the preseason top 10 in several polls and as national championship contenders. With momentum and a talented group of players returning, Aggie land is buzzing as this emerging college football program moves closer to its ultimate goal.